My name is Jerry and I have a problem. Actually, I got two problems. One, I got to clean up. I'm just like any other man in America. Can't keep organized. Two, I have a problem with buying something I can build, especially for the price of it. Now, plasma cam, you know, CNC plasma cutters, they're, they're nice. I'm pretty sure you get a lot of, a lot of great features for the, the hefty price tag. But I am going to build one for way, way less. I mean, dirt, dirt cheap. And it's gonna start with this piece of metal right here. When I get it all set up, get you on a tripod, I'll be right back and I'll show you what I'm doing. Right, this right here is gonna be the holder for the V-Grew bearing. Got a pack of eight for like $24 shipped to the house off of eBay. And this is what they look like right here. All right, what it is, this, this dimension ain't crucial, but I turned it down to fit this bearing, put a little relief on the shoulders, then turn it down to fit the slot that I milled into the plate, and thread it both ends. I mean, it's just as simple as that. Also, this is how cheap this rail is. Two inch angle iron. Works really good though. Also put some tightening screws right here. These are fixed. These slide, you can adjust it. And if you have to adjust these a little bit, you can probably turn a, a holder to where it kind of, what is it, off center? You can adjust it that way. But that's it, man. Let's get back to the legs and get started. All right, I got it faced and turned down roughly. First thing we're gonna do is work on the very end to where the bearing will sit on the shaft. Uh, there's several ways you could do this. You could paint it with a uh, layout die and scrub a line. This is a uh, milling machine analyte. So on the lead screw, it's got divisions. And this is what I do. I'm gonna turn it, I'm crank it up, turn it on, touch off the work. Set a zero. Disable the, turn the lead screw off. Locked the carriage, then I'm gonna dial in 430 thousandths. The bearings I have are 435 thousandths. That'll give it a nice uh, uh, little recess. That way, when I tighten the bolt down, it's got it's hitting the bearing and not bottoming me out on the on the shaft. I'm gonna turn that down to 373. These uh, bearings tend to be like 2 thousandths under on the ID. Then once I get done with that. From here to about there is gonna be 600 thousandths. That's that little spacer. It's not crucial. Then uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do the same thing with the lead screw, walk it over, mark off the 600. I'm gonna take my parting tool, and on the, this side of the, on that side of the parting tool, I'm gonna mark it at 600 thousandths, make a little groove cut. Then I'm gonna walk it down 240 thousandths again, because my plate's 250, give me 10 thousandths clearance. Then I'm gonna cut it off there flip it over and turn down the half inch shank for the plate. Then after that, we'll drill it, tap it, chamfer it, and it'll be ready to go, to go on. So let me get that stuff done and I'll try to take some pictures on the way. All right. All right, got it turned down. Brain fits on it. It's not too tight, probably a thousand clearance. You don't have to be super critical. All right. See how it's sticking out? I accidentally cut off that face a little bit more. So I'm gonna trim that down right here, chamfer it, and I'm gonna put a slight step in it just to hold the uh, the race, keep from digging into that plastic. And we'll be ready to uh, mark out, part it off, and flip it over. Be right back. Walked over 600 thousandths, put a groove in there, and I walked another 240. That's where I'm going to part it off at. That'll be uh, just shy of 250, which is the plate thickness. And I'm going to flip it over, turn it down to a half inch shank, maybe a thou or two under. Then we're going to drill and thread it. All right. All right, this side's turned and face down turned to length and diameter. We're going to drill it, tap it, and we're going to put it on the plate 
Try it on the rail. Be right back. High speed tapping. Uh, these are pretty good taps right here. This thing is running about 1600 RPMs, which I'm not going to do like that. I don't like changing the belts in the machine. So I found, you turn the machine off, let it press down to a certain point, you just let it have it. If it's strong enough to take it, it slows down, and it's pretty much the perfect depth. Then you can reverse your machine back out. You got an isolated hole. Don't do it too fast because that chuck has momentum. It'll, it'll snap that cap, but if you let it pose down to a speed you're comfortable with and just let it feed itself, it'll swap. That tap shank is ground pretty precise, so if it gets too tight, too much of a bind, it'll start slipping in that chuck. You can't hold it very well. Or too tight to where it'll break. And that's how I do it, man. Clean out the hole. Got a nice thread. I'll show you what that's for in a minute. All right, here's the finished part. Quarter 20 threads on both sides. This side's machined for the bearing. It's got a little step on it. Just to keep the bearing off of it. This side's machined to fit into the slot on the plate. You just do two bolts and some washers and put it all together. There's no focus. Alright, let's get it together and put it on and see what it does.